So hi and hello once again. So we are on our lesson number six, transmission and distribution. So we need to continue our problem, which is problem number five. So before we proceed with the solution here, let's uh, move. Uh, let us read the problem first. Okay. So a uh, three-phase, twenty-kilometer line delivers a load of ten megawatts at eleven kV. The power factor at the receiving end is 0 0.707. Lagging. The line resistance is 0 0.02 ohm per kilometer and the inductive reactance is 0 0.07 ohm per kilometer per phase. Now, we need to calculate the efficiency of the line if the receiving end power factor is raised at 0.9 by a static capacitor or condenser, what will be the new efficiency or the effect of the new power factor? Okay, before anything else, we need to Draw the single line diagram in a per pace basis. So this is the per pace basis or PPA of this problem here. Okay. And then as usual, if you have a three pace uh, three wire line referring at phase A as our common reference, so we have this per pace basis, which yields to a sending end voltage with a transmission angle alpha, R plus Jx, or the impedance, series impedance, and the receiving end uh, load, and it has a receiving end voltage, with the bar zero as your reference. So, uh, we have here your current IL. So, that's your current IL, which is equal to IS equal to IR. Or simply, in other words, I simply because the current that is moving, that is uh, flowing on the circuit is series. Okay, so before we do the solution, let us have you now the resistance in total. So since we're in a per pace basis, we need to multiply 0 0.02 by 20 kilometer with the length. So it will cancel and write on this one. And we yield at 0.4 ohms. By the way, we still have this, the following given the problem. Length is 20 kilometer, power factor receiving end is 0 0.707 lag, and PR is 10 megawatts. Okay, so the 11 kV on the problem, simply your total voltage or line-to-line -line voltage, if you divide it by square root of 3, definitely the answer is in terms of receiving end voltage. And it is bar zero because we treat it as reference, okay, by default. Okay, we have your R as 0.4 and then 0 0.07 ohm per kilometer multiplied by 20, cancel and gretel again. The answer is 1.4 ohms, okay, which is the R and Jx. Now, our main goal is to get the efficiency of the problem. Okay, so the equations for the efficiency is simply like this, okay, P out over P in times 100%. Or in transmission line parameters, this is a PR all over PS, you multiply it by 100% or the receiving end power divided by the sending end power. But we can you now have this relationship into this form in terms of losses. We have PO all over PO plus P losses times 100%. If you correlate this formula here, this PR is also, IPO rather, is PR. And this P loss is definitely, since this is a three-phase system, 3 I squared R is the total losses of the line. So if you already have these variables here, we can now get the efficiency. Okay, this is easy peasy because all of the parameters already given here, all you have to do is to get the current. So to get the current, we will use this equation here in terms of line to line basis. So again, if you have a square root of 3 here, please take note the voltage here must be in a line to line basis. Okay, it must be in a line-to-line -line basis because this will be different if we use in terms of times 3, which means this one is in terms of per pace basis. Please take note of that so that you will not be confused. Okay, so what we'll do is arranging this equation. I use a nice in this one. Get IR. Okay, that is PR over square root 3 VR PFR. Now you have you here 0.707. Please take note, by the way, before anything else, this is in terms of power. Okay, you have a power factor of three, 
uh, power factor you're receiving and you need to multiply it because if this is SR, there's no power factor. Okay, if you do so, you have 742.4 amperes. And then, since we discuss in terms of losses, we need to multiply the I squared by the resistance per phase. So, 3 times 742.4 squared times 0.4. The answer is 661.389 kilowatt. What you will do is to substitute you know, all of the parameters that we have computed you know, in this equation here that we have discussed. And then, multiply by 100 definitely to become percent. Okay, you have 10 mega all over 10 mega plus 661.389 kilowatt. The answer is 93.79%. Okay, however, the problem needs another scenario here. That if you have a synchronous capacitor or, uh, capacitor or condenser, if you have a capacitor, so it means power factor connection, and we increase the power factor new to its value of 0.9 lagging. So what will happen to the efficiency? So we will do the same scenario. Since other parameters are constant, so you have 10 megawatt over square root of 3, 11k, the voltage at the receiving end, but you change 0.9, no? Power factor. The answer definitely, it will lower the volt the current to 500.18. Substitute in this formula here, so 10 over uh, 10 mega times 100 percent over 10 mega times 3 times 583.18 squared uh, uh, multiplied by 0.4, which is the per phase uh, resistance no, of the line. And thus the answer is 96 percent. So what's the moral lesson of the story? If you increase the power factor, you will increase the efficiency of the system of the transmission line. So it's very, very clear that if we increase the power factor, which is the cosine angle, and the angle is the difference between the voltage angle and the current angle in the sending end, it will yield to a better efficiency. So we will now go forward to problem number six. Stay tuned. Hi, and hello once again. So, we are in problem number six on short lines. I think this is the last problem for short lines, and we already described and evaluated uh, some of the uh, important problems on short lines. So, I think this is another alternative for you to, to understand uh, a short line problem we're in instead of VR, VSN is the unknown, VRN is the unknown uh, variable okay let us solve the uh, let us uh, read the problem first a three-phase transmission line has a series resistance of 10 ohms per wire and reactance 30 ohms per wire <clears throat> the load current is 90 ampere and the power factor of the load is 80 percent log the sending end voltage of the line is 44 kilovolt now what is the receiving end line voltage so what i'm trying to propose here is it's like uh, uh, one of our problems, I think problem number two, that instead of uh, uh, the same thing of getting VRN, but different approach. So let us uh, see you know, the uh, problem first. So this is the single line diagram. And by using per phase analysis again, phase A as our reference, and this is a three phase, three wire system. Okay, you have your VSN here, bar alpha, with the, ang uh, the transmission line angle, the R and JXL, the series impedance, and your VRN, which is the unknown. Please take note that the power factor is already defined as 0.8 lagging. So it means if you have a 90 ampere magnitude of the current, okay, you can now get your I here with a phasor, which is magnitude and direction. You have 90 bar 36.87 by having the inverse of the cosine of 0.8 and by using Cisco table as we have discussed many many times now in no, the previous lessons this is negative which cons, uh, which is in lagging condition so from that we have no the VSN the IR the ZL the unknown is your N so let us have those 
given here on our phase or equation for short lines. So you have your Vsn bar alpha is equal to Vrn bar zero, which is reference plus Ir and Zn, which is the drop. You have here 44 kilo if you divide by square root of 3, but you do not know the transmission angle. And then you have Vrn plus J0 plus 90 bar negative 37, and then you multiply it by your Zl. Now we need to simplify this further. And from this, if you multiply 90 by 37 negative by 10 plus J80, it will yield with this answer here. And if you divide the 44K by square root of 3, it will yield with 25.4 uh, kilovolts. And then your angle alpha, which is your unknown. Please take note, our main goal is to get rear end. Okay, in order to do that, again, this is the same thing with problem number 2, if I'm not mistaken. That you need to separate real and reactive parts no in order to simplify and get vrn here so for that no we need to have the real parts which is vrn and 5040 and the reactive part which is a 52199 or 5212 uh, uh, 5220 if if you want a more uh simplified but uh, i use at least two decimal places here 5219.99 so this is the real and the reactive part and then this is the result in terms of uh, the total uh, uh polar form now we can now use no the euler identity and getting again the magnitude only no this only magnitude so for this we just eliminate all the reactive for J components, so you have 25.404K squared, which is your Z. And then your real part, the VRN plus 54P squared, and then your reactive part, which is 5219.99 squared. Now, this is more simpler than before. We also get VRN, if I'm not like mistaken, no, hopefully. And here, only one parameter is the known. I think that problem is I. Uh, if, I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken, get all the uh, real and reactive parts of the receiving end. But here is a different approach or different problem because we need to get VRN. Okay, for this, we can now get VRN, definitely. And by using a little bit of your math or algebra, so you can also shift salt if you want. It's your choice, by the way. So your VRN here, VRN here you have a radical square root. And then you have minus 540 here, and then this uh, 25.404 squared minus 52199 squared. Then square it. Okay, if you do so, the answer is 19.821 kilovolt. And if you multiply it by square root of 3, so that you can eliminate the neutral to become line to line basis, the answer is 34.33 kilovolts in terms of line to line. So I think that will be enough you know, for short lines. So let us see. On our next problem, which is problem number seven, see you.